Seahurst Park is 178 acres and has nearly a mile of shoreline. It's not only the crown jewel of Burien's park system, it's also one of the biggest and best parks in all of central Puget Sound. When the county originally designed this park, they had a grand uh, plan to create lots of uh, shoreline uh, recreation where people could go right out um, onto the shore, high tide or low tide. They created uh, perched beaches, big sandy beaches right out this way. So at high tide, you could be right up next to the shore. When those paths were designed, they didn't really take into account the impact of the wave action on the seawalls. And over time, the beach eroded from the base of the seawalls, and that caused them basically to tip over. At the south end of the park, where we removed the seawall, it's basically back to its natural condition before the seawall was built. When we did the park master plan in 2001, one of the things we heard from the public was that they really liked most about the park was its natural aspects. And so when we've um, done our planning and then started on our actual projects, one of the big motivating things is to get the park back to its natural condition. And by removing the seawall and replanting the shoreline with native plants, we've basically gotten it back to what it was before people came in and modified the park. The state has a salmon habitat restoration initiative on all of Puget Sound. Seahurst Park plays a role in that. So when we renovated the south part of the park, part of our project was to restore salmon habitat. In order to evaluate whether we did a good job, we're partnering with People for Puget Sound and they're doing uh, evaluations of how uh, the particular parameters of salmon habitat are coming back. Seahurst Park has become a very well-known and beloved place because of the dramatic restoration that the city of Burien has embarked on. The restoration that's taken place here has been really exciting because it's showing us a lot about uh, nearshore dynamics and what can happen when you remove a bulkhead or an armored structure and watch nature kind of come back to a place. So some of the creatures that are dependent on that upper part of the beach, all of our forage fish, the small fish that are at the base of all the food chains in, in the Puget Sound, some of them spawn at the upper part of that beach in those gravels. And they're typically uh, shaded by overhanging vegetation. In this case, there is a, a wall. There's a lot of wave energy. The, the sand doesn't... Um, the sand and gravels don't sort out the same way because you've got waves crashing against this wall and they sort differently than on a nice, gentle, gradual beach, which will, will sort out those grains differently. So these small um, forage fish, sand lance and others, uh, can't, uh, don't have anywhere to spawn. And then they are the basis for other creatures, larger fish, uh, all the way up into orcas, uh, your birds, loons, grebes all of the other creatures that live on the sound. People for Puget Sound um, runs a sound stewardship program. We have, uh, we engage citizens in doing restoration projects all over the sound in places much like Sears Park. We also work in Olympia to educate our, our legislators about issues around the sound. 
and we really want our vision is to see a healthy and vibrant Puget Sound with all of the creatures that that we all love to have live here with us and really the Puget Sound is the jewel of, of Western Washington we all we swim in it and we boat on it and you know I think everyone just loves it and we want to make sure that it's healthy for us and our grandchildren and everyone who comes to live here after us. Down at the north end of the park, we have a marine technology center that's operated by Highline School District and Puget Sound Vocational Skills Center. That facility is shared by seven different high schools and school districts, so they train people from all around central Puget Sound. My name is Joe Weiss. I'm the uh, instructor here at the Marine Technology Lab in Seahurst Park. And uh, I've been the instructor here for 15 years. Uh, I think I've got the best teaching job in America because I get to work with some great students, first of all, and a terrific program that's uh, always evolving to uh, keep pace with the changes in uh, marine and environmental sciences and the marine industry. Students come down and they learn uh, practical skills like seamanship, navigation, uh, vessel safety. That includes a two-day cold water survival class we complete at the end of the year. The other side of the program is the marine sciences. And so my students study everything related to the uh, ocean environment, from uh, physical oceanography to marine geology, to marine biology. And so what they're doing is they're conducting real science out there by monitoring the beach uh, restoration area. Uh, a few years back we went out and uh, the state of Washington had certified us uh, in that uh, particular form of uh, scientific monitoring and so uh, we're going out as part of a five-year study uh, bright and early, sometimes at 5 30, 6 in the morning in the winter and uh, taking samples from the beach looking for evidence of uh, forage fish spawning. So, you know, we're real fortunate to have so many people interested in Seahurst and uh, partnering with us, partnering with the city and uh, making this really uh, in its own way a center of uh, environmental preservation uh, and environmental research. There's a trail system here in the park. It's not a well-developed trail system, but it's extensive. So there are uh, roads to walk on and pathways. Some of them are in pretty good condition that almost anybody could walk on. Some of them are more of a natural backcountry type experience. They're more uh, footpaths. Uh, there's two streams in the park, and so people can enjoy the stream here at the shoreline. The shoreline stream's a kid magnet. You come here any day in the winter or in the summer, and there's almost always kids playing in the stream. When I'm here, rain or shine, there's always somebody walking on the pathway or up on the service road or on the North Nature Trail. People are really have been respectful and have taken good care of this park, but one of the things they should realize is that the marine environment is delicate and this area is a marine reserve and so people are not allowed to pick up and remove uh, marine creatures or even rocks and seaweed and, and shells for that matter. They're all here for everyone to enjoy and if every person who comes picks up something and takes it away, then they're basically taking away something and, and the next person's not able to enjoy it. So we do like people to come and enjoy what they see, but to leave it here.